actually. It's a little close to the rear, so if you watch the adjustment there, watch it down here. It's about right. We're going to take this guy and loosen it. Thanks. Like that. Now, if we're close to the front of the plate, we can take this guy and we can do it like this. Because it shifts yeah. it like yeah. that. What does it look like? It looks dead nuts. Okay. Right there. What was the Swiss phrase? Pardon me? The Swiss phrase for exactly to mark. Exactly. <laughs> Genuine Swiss. <laughs> okay, with it like this now, you can see that when I switch needle position left and right, we're closer to the right side. So what I can do here is I can go and loosen slightly this little screw under there, but I didn't tighten it tight, if you remember. I left it a little bit loose. Mm -hmm. So what I can do then, if it's slightly loose, is I can go through here, through the end, right here. And that was the little cam that you showed earlier. Yeah, this is a little eccentric, and you can see the end of it right there. See where the screwdriver is? Okay. So right here, if we watch that, I can look from back here and I can look at the needle plate and I can say, okay, let's see what happens when I go this direction. I'm moving it left, more that way, and now I can move it back. You see it moving? So I can move it like this. See that? Yep. Or I can move it back like yep. that. Yep. And you want it right in the middle? Right. Yeah, that's a couple of millimeters throw you got. So, right here, if I then I switch left on the left stitch position here, right stitch position here, you can see I'm still favoring more to the... Uh-huh. Yeah, there was a bigger uh, gap on the left that side. right then. here, I'm going to move that away. So yep. now, mm -hmm. when I switch to this stitch position, and I use my fingernail to push the needle against the stitch plate, you can see there's a little bit of variance here, a little bit of e a little gap. Yeah. And when I switch it back, I have a little, little more gap. So what I can do is then I can I can uh, readjust that and bring that more so that I have equidistance. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now we look at that like that, and then if we go on the other side, we've got that about right. Mm -hmm. Okay. It seemed about even to me. Okay. The Your son gave that to you. Nope. I found it in a in a uh, at this in a place called National Product Sales, where they buy back from U, uh, UPS and other companies damaged when the trailer turns over. They buy all the work stuff. So that was in one of the sets. You know, so. Wow. So we're at zero. Let's go to needle position at center. Oh, I guess we're okay. Your position is centered here, pretty close. So if we tighten this screw, I think it will see that when I turn the hand wheel and we put this gauge on here, wheel we don't want you can see here how we have uh, we have zigzag on straight stitch like this you see the needle here okay so I go here like this I'm going to take the adjustment and we're going to move probably up this way the halfway. Yeah. 
and turn it back. So now we've got here. We have four thousandths movement. We we'll go back here. Now we're going to move it two more thousandths. initially is about a half thousand movement but this is metric and so this is way small indication here so that you would never notice any zigzag on straight stitch okay so we're done here on this one and, and you're 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 tight so this is what you were tightening yeah except the next thing we want to do is zigzag needle position so now let's go back, turn this to center, and now let's switch zigzag to the maximum. And now when we look at this, we're going to say, okay, it, does our it parabola hit is upside yeah. down, but uh, uh, we can, let me just temporarily fix that. I mean, it's not going to be fine-tuned, but it will be close enough to what we want. On domestic machines, we're going to use this screw, because we don't have this adjustment. So right here, we're going to make sure that this screw is tight. It is, and now we're going to make our adjustment here, but I'm not going to loosen totally loose. We're just going to go a little finger tight, and then at this point... And that's the brand new fork you just put in. Yes, and right here we have to bring our needle more that side, that, to that side, so I can go in the top here. And with this screw tight, slightly tight, this is not going to be totally loose. Okay? Just a little just tap. Just giving a little tap. And now... You can see our needle has moved so that now we're almost equidistant here. So we push here, like this, and on this side. Now what we can do, because the needle position adjustments on this and the zigzag width are precise, we could put a piece of paper in here and zigzag at center, we could go right stitch position and barely puncture a little teensy, weensy hole in the paper and switch to the right side, punch a hole in the paper and go back. To and they should be equidistant from the now, one in the middle. when we turn this guy, then we could go like this, here and here, and you should be exactly in the same spots. This is the same thing you showed on the, on the 830 or That's 730. Correct. Yeah. Same principles. Okay. Now let me show you, I've got a correct parabola here. We'll do that real quick and then we'll do the hook adjustments, okay? So on the parabola, what we're changing in this case is just like on the, the other machines, we're change, taking the worm wheel, the worm gear here, and we're going to, um, what we're gonna do is we're, gonna, we're going to uh, uh, rotate it so that the parabola is at the, is at the uh, its apex is up at the top, okay? So, in other words, in the middle, the parabola is, is correct. The direction changes is center needle position at the top of the parabola. So, right here, what I do normally is I'll take my uh, finger here, I'll go uh, with, uh, on straight stitch, I'll go to the highest needle position like that, and then I'll turn it, take the stitch width knob and I'll go back and forth. You can see how much we're moving. Like that. Let's get the center knee position there. Okay. How much we're moving? And I can take my thumb, see the red mark here? I can put my thumb on the hand wheel, or you can put a mark on the hand wheel if you want, and I can do this. I can go back and forth. As I rotate the hand wheel, when it gets better, about here. At some point it doesn't move, right? So that means that I turn, that it took the correction. What I've got to do is to loosen the, the gear, and now I have to take the hand wheel and turn it from here backwards to correct it. I'm just retiming the, the device. Okay, send them out. So right here, I'm going to find a spot where I can brace myself with a screwdriver in place, like this. Let me turn this down. Okay. I don't want to move, and so you can see here. I put my thumb on the hand wheel here. It turned about that much. And then I can loosen the screw here. 
Now hold that screw, hold that, the gear with the screw, and rotate the hand wheel back through the same amount, tight. Now watch. See, now it looks better, doesn't it? Yeah. But now let's check it. So we're gonna check it like this, all the way up. And we favor it slightly one more to one side. Uh, I think it might turn too far. Let's see if I did. I did. So what we're going to do is I'll have to come back through a little bit. I turn it a little bit too far. So we'll go in here and we'll just do this again. And that screw. Loosen it. What I'm looking at the right here my marks. And if I loosen this, I can then go back very slightly and tighten it. And now let's check the other one. Highest position. That's pretty good. About as good as you're going to get from the factory. Okay? Now you mm -hmm. can get it perfect. Uh, I don't know if you want to spend the time on it because that's not that critical. And what we're going to do now is we're going to set the hook back in place. And so, let's turn the hand wheel and pull the feed dog all the way back. And at some given point in here, I never pay attention to what it is because I usually just feel around until it goes. Uh, I'm going to be able to put the hook back in place. It'd be nice if I had to drop feed, then it would be easy. So, okay, there we go. You have to kind of tip it that way. So, <clears throat> what we're going to do, we're going to run the needle down to its lowest position. And what we're going to do is we're going to set the hook. Um, we're going to put a gauge on the machine, which is a loop lift gauge. Now, on this machine, it, on, the, on the domestic sewing machines, like a 950, use the same hook. They set, stitch, they set the loop lift on left stitch position left stitch position. We don't do that on this machine. What we're going to do the newer setting on this machine because there's different widths of zigzag and they all require a different loop lift setting. You have four and a half millimeter, a four and a half, something like that, six, eight, and ten or twelve. Okay. So here <clears throat> we're going to use a two millimeter loop lift which is a very common loop lift for a lot of kinds of machines. And we're going to put a, a we're going to put a block in here like that, and we're going to uh, you know what I'm going to use another tool. Uh, I think you want to see with this tool how you use it. Uh, you put the step gauge in there, and uh, and what you'll do is you'll set the step gauge so that the on the bottom of the needle bar support here it's flat. And you're going to tighten that like that. And then what you do is you pull it out, and it's two millimeters. This instead of being four, is two millimeters. And then when you lift the hand wheel up like this, you're going to lift two millimeters. Well, I can't do that with this, with this like this. But what I can do is I can take uh, use that block because I don't have to take this thing out. And I can put a loop lift gauge underneath it like that, which is two millimeters. Like that, okay. So that makes the total of four. Well, no, I mean right here, it's, I'm not using the block the way it's supposed to be used. I'm just using it as a stop because mm -hmm. I don't. I have to get clearance away from this thing. That's why I'm using it. Just as he didn't want to get that thing, take that out. Yeah. So here we want to find the lowest position. You can see how the gauge goes up and down like that. Find the lowest position of that. Loosen again, tighten, and then we go back and forth, and we're good. I can pull this out. Now what I do is I rotate the hand wheel in the direction of motion until the gauge connects. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this. It's a lot easier to do because the machine's out like this, you know. It's not so easy uh, in, and I would use a shorter screwdriver. We'll take this guy here. Okay. Another little invention here on these little guys. And you have a screw accessible right here. We're going to take that screw and we're going to touch the hook drive axle and we're going to set that so that the that the hook itself is just barely 
when we take the lash out like this and we're going to move the lash backward like that we want that hook point just to the left side of the needle at the same time we've got to have clearance here we don't have any so we're going to have to go in here and give ourselves a little clearance there like that okay you want as close as possible without friction that's about you're about as good as you're going to be but I just noticed something on the needle our needle is not in straight and we'll loosen that and turn the needle where it's supposed to be making sure it's all the way up in the needle bar clamp okay now like that and that screw is slightly it's just snug and I've adjusted out my so I have barely some clearance there and that needle is way low so we're gonna and that was the problem before is we said that the needle was too low and that's why we couldn't duplicate the you know the um, situation where you're feeding it heavy material that would not work so right here then I've tightened this one tight enough like that check it again nothing's moved okay take this back out like so we turn our hand wheel this side and then we can tighten get it tight so those screws you can see how damaged they are here somebody's you know they've been into this machine a number of times and kind of messed it up and that's probably why they couldn't get it so right so they started changing the height of the needle okay that's tight and go to the side and retighten that guy there okay now we have to put the stop fork in place You can see we're a little bit too far. We've got to move it backwards slightly. And uh, so, is it adjustment you do by eye? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there's no gauge for it, and you could be a little, little one way or the other. As long as it didn't hit anything, then you're good to go. Is there? Sh see the gap here? This should be flush with the tip of the of the hook. So somebody's been into that too. So here they haven't known what to do with it. the side. So we're going to move that out, and then we're going to tighten the screw, and that's the way it's supposed to be. Okay. Gauge there, because this is for domestic machines. Okay, right here, what we've got to do is we have to lift that feed dog up because it's, it's pretty down, it's down their ways. What we want to do is we want to bring the take up lever to the highest position like that. If I line up a tooth on the machine like this, on its longest stitch length, when I rotate the hand wheel so the needle goes down, that tooth should advance about one third to uh, about one third to one half of a tooth. That doesn't look, that looks good. Here is the, is the adjustment for the height. And uh, you'll be able to see. What size screwdriver was that? That's yeah, about a number four or five. Four is fine. Here, like this. Okay, you can see from the bottom side here. This is the clamp right here. And you can see this is the feed dog uh, support or feed dog frame, lifting frame. And if we move this down, the feed dog goes up. If we pull it this way, the feed dog comes down. So that's what we're going to do here. I'm going to do it with one screw. Move it slightly loose so that we can move the frame up or down. It's too tight here. Never make your adjustment with this something totally loose. And sometimes you can, but just like moving a vice around on a milling machine. You have a, a milling machine at home? No, at work we have a Bridgeport. Oh yeah, Br Bridgeport clone. You sure got a great lathe. 
Yeah, it's a hardened um, HLV clone, Taiwan. Yeah, I am not a, a I'm not a, a Bridgeport. That's what I learned on long ago when I was a boy. But that's not my. I got introduced to to a German and Swiss made machines, and once I saw those things, I thought, ooh, I'd love to have one. And that was my intent with. Uh, Come on. Well, I'm not a I'm 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 not a real machinist. I'm a mile maker, so I, I do some light machining. You know, it's yeah, but I mean, uh, you understand all of the principles for that. the The advantage of the for the the training I had when I was a boy. It's the fact that I learned to make jigs and fixtures. And you don't do that anymore. You want it to carry there. Actually, it should carry that in the front, but not in the rear, but uh, right here. See, it doesn't carry it here. That's good. I will show you how to set tension. There's a lot of people say, you set tension like this. Like a like a yo-yo. Yeah. Oh, what does that get you? Wrap through it around my finger like this. What I want to have happen. My tension is set right. Hold it like this. With this tension weight, with this particular thread, which is uh, this is thread, which was the gauge thread for the hand quilter machine. And. Uh, Anyway, uh, and this thread is imported from Japan. It's a long staple polyester, very strong, and uh, and it's usually very, very smooth. This thread's been sitting out for quite a while, so it's not as smooth as it looks it should be. Anyway, so I pull off about a foot, and I put my two fingers together with about an eighth of an inch apart. And then as I go like this, that bobbin case should fall gently, and as I stop, it should stop. If I do this, what does that get me? <laughs> you know, a person could go like that and goes wham on the floor, oh, i got to tie the tension, or a person goes like this, you know, they do it and it doesn't hardly move. Uh, th there's no way of accurately gauging the, the tension. You'll find on the, on the YouTube videos and this kind of thing that, that that's how they do it. But if a person simply takes their fingers an eighth of an inch apart, everybody can do that. And you get about the same vibration. Domestic machines are the same, except on your Bernina 730, you use the hook body in the machine as your tension weight. It's nearly the same weight as that. And that's for CB hooks. That's for all domestic machines, all the domestic CB hook machines. So what do we use for the 730? The, the hook body in the machine. You snap it on the bobbin case and away you go. Oh, so just as if you were going to sew with it, but you haven't put it in, and you pull yeah. some out and. On the on the on the the end of the spring, you have mm -hmm. this this gap here. Yeah. And you want to pull thread from side to side, and make sure it pulls evenly. Tension on that side is that side. Mm 